The historic flooding created long-lasting damage in several communities, putting thousands on the long road to recovery. For some, picking up the pieces has been manageable with the help of FEMA and disaster aid. But others seem to be running out of options. In Plattsmouth, the water treatment plant was surrounded by water for months after the flood. The situation was so bad, they brought in the National Guard. KATV News Watch 7's Michelle Bandour has the story. The only way to the Plattsmouth water treatment plant is by boat. Well, the Missouri River came up 24 feet in those 24 hours. And then some. The flood put this measurement gauge to shame. It topped out at more than 40 and a half feet. We need to get that water plant repaired. We, we need to get that system back online as soon as we possibly can. The challenge the city faces, getting necessary equipment to the plant. Take a look at the Skywatch 7 drone video. It shows the plant and the five wells surrounded by water. Water. It's an island. City administrators are trying to figure out why the water is still here. One theory, they think the flow of the Platte River changed. Well, something structurally has just changed and the water is not escaping and getting back into the river. On shore, you can see the area caked with sand, silt, and mud. An attempt at sandbagging stopped at 30 feet of water. To show you perspective on how high the floodwaters rose here in Plattsmouth, I'm 5'10", and I'm about two feet below this clear well behind me. The water went above the vent pipe you see up there. Water still fills the backup generator, totally useless now. Decontaminate everything in these filters before we can start production. If they can get the necessary equipment to the plant, the city has a long and expensive overhaul to get clean water pumping in Plattsmouth again. The federal government, NEMA, the state government will help us, but there will still be a cost to our citizens. Michelle Bandour, KETV Newswatch 7. As the floods hit the village of Waterloo, first responders stepped up to keep people safe. Some worked for days without a break, a sometimes thankless job that was finally recognized. Here again, KETV News Watch 7's Michelle Bandour. We just want to recognize some of the officers. Taking time to say thank you. Some of the, uh, their actions during the flood event. Waterloo's police chief says it's important for his force of four officers, albeit small but mighty, know their hard work during the flood is invaluable. They actually went above and beyond. You know, there, there isn't an officer that worked for the department that didn't do more than what he was expected to do. Chief Tim Donahue handed out meritorious service awards at the Village of Waterloo Town Board meeting Tuesday evening. Sergeant Tom Lamb, Officer Lane Paca, and Wes Chrisman received the recognition. They all worked at least 72 hours straight with few breaks. We didn't get sleep. There was nobody to relieve us. We just did the job. It had to be done, so we just got it done. The chief recognized Chrisman for his innovative and effective way to watch the river levels. Officer Chrisman placed homemade stakes with numbers along the levee to keep an eye on the rising waters. Government gauges the National Weather Service normally uses did not work during the flood. We were able to relay that to the Weather Service and help them update their prediction, which actually was, was pretty neat that it worked out that way. It just, it just happened. The certificates may be a piece of paper on the surface but they have deeper meaning for a small community who needed these men during a crisis, men who are proud to serve. As tragic as it was, um, it's, it's still something that, you know, we'll, we'll never forget and we'll always remember how people pulled together. Michelle Bandour, KETV Newswatch 7. Recent rains brought a second round of flooding in Pottawatomie County. This month, county board voted to declare a new disaster. And while farmers' fields are underwater, so are their finances. KTV News Watch 7's David Earl filed this report. You can see that tree line down there. That would be the Missouri River. Corey McIntosh is the fourth generation of his family to farm here. He knows the river and its flood history back to the 1800s. In the last nine years, we have set six of the highest 11 records during that 140 year period. But he says this year is like no other. Didn't imagine that we would be reflooded to this degree. In March, his farm flooded and the water escaping his fields blew out the nearby levee. Now, that breach has come back to haunt northwestern Pottawatomie County. Our outlet has become our inlet, unfortunately. As he watches his freshly planted corn drown, emergency managers in the basement of the Council Bluffs fire station watch the rising water. So we have a lot of uh, 
places where waters receded that it's now flooding again about to the same levels as, as it was originally in March. They can't do anything to help farmers like McIntosh until the Missouri River drops. We really need the river to be at or below 24 foot to even access some areas. But that may be too late for McIntosh. You might be able to hold for a week or so, but when you get into events like this that last months and months, you just can't hold it. Making him wonder out loud about the future. If things like this keep up, if we're going to be the, if there will be a fifth generation, we can't take this much longer. David Earl reporting. It's important to note, this is just a small sample of the stories we've told over the past few months. There are a lot of people who've made a difference after this spring disaster. If you want to get to know them and their stories, head to KETV.com. You can check out all of our coverage of the flood plus updates on the recovery effort that continues. If you've missed any part of this show or you want to watch it again, it's on our website. Just go to our homepage, click on the menu button and look for Chronicle. I'm Rob McCartney. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next Sunday morning for KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle.